What's up, everybody? It's Jordan, and welcome to Sports Two Hunt Show. In this video, I want to be doing a free agency preview for the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, in this video, I want to be doing kind of like a free agency mock for Arizona, a three-round mock draft from PFF, and also kind of be doing a record prediction uh, for the Cardinals this upcoming season based on the moves I do in this video for the Cardinals. So let's go ahead and get started here. So last year, the Cardinals were 4-13. and 13. They ended up firing Cliff Kingsbury. Uh, Kyler Murray was hurt a decent part of last year. And they bring in a new head coach, Jonathan Gannon, you know, who is formerly the defensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles. Gannon was amazing this year for the Eagles. This team had 70 sacks last year. It had four different players with 10 or more sacks. Uh, when you look at the Cardinals heading into this 2023 offseason, some of their team needs are edge, center, and cornerback. Um, you know, when you look at the cap space uh, situation right now for Arizona, they have about 14 million in cap space. But when you look at cap casualties, I feel like that's something the Cardinals should really be looking at. Like I said, they have about 14 million dollars, but cap casualty, I feel like somebody who should be cut for Arizona is Robbie Anderson. They would save about 12 million dollars and bump up that 14 million to around 26 million dollars in cap space available for Arizona. Robbie Anderson was terrible for Arizona. In 10 games, he had just 17 targets, seven receptions, and 76 yards. To me, if you're the Cardinals, I just don't feel like Anderson's going to be a part of the long-term future. Go ahead and cut him. You could have, you know, maybe sign another player or two with that money you're saving if you release uh, Robbie Anderson. Some of the re-signs for the Cardinals. I have them re-signing a uh, corner Byron Murphy. Like I said, corner is a need for Arizona. And if it's already a need to begin with, if you were to lose Byron Murphy, that would be even worse for this Arizona secondary. He's one of their uh, best players on defense. I feel like retaining him is pretty much a must in the offseason for the Cardinals. Uh, somebody else I think the Cardinals may consider uh, re-signing is guard Will Hernandez. I have him signing to a two-year contract worth $8 million. And, you know, with the Byron Murphy deal, it was three years for 21. So Murphy was seven. Will Hernandez is four a year. And when you look at the Cardinals, like I mentioned, team needs, edge is definitely a team need because, you know, the Cardinals were 24th in sacks last season. And, you know, J.J. Watt retired. He had a really surprisingly good year considering his age. He had 12 and a half sacks last year. They also have Zach Allen, who is a free agent. I feel that they have to re-sign him. I had them re-signing Zach Allen to a three-year deal worth $24 million because when you look at Zach Allen and J.J. Watt, when you look at last season, those players combined for 50% of Arizona sacks last season. Arizona had 36 sacks last year. Allen and Watt combined had 18. So I feel like it's very important for Arizona to keep Zach Allen because you're already losing a big presence on the edge with J.J. Watt. But if you lose Zach Allen, that could be very, very bad for this um, Arizona defense. Last season, Allen had five and a half sacks, 10 tackles for loss, and 20 quarterback hits. I feel like he's a little underrated. People don't want really to talk about him enough, but I feel like it would be really smart if Arizona uh, would re-sign Zach Allen uh, to a three-year deal worth $24 million. Look at some of his free agent signings here. You know, Cardinals, like I said, they don't have a ton of money. Even with, you know, releasing Robbie Anderson, like I have them doing here, they only have about, you know, $26, 27000000 million. So I already had them re-sign three players in Byron Murphy, Will Hernandez, and Zach Allen. When it looks at free agency money, they really don't have a lot to spend after their re-signs. There's only one really guy to me. I have the Cardinals uh, signing in free agency that is not one of their own players currently, and that is center uh, Connor McGovern. I had them signing him to a three-year deal worth $24 million. When you look at Rodney Hudson last year, Rodney Hudson only played four games for Arizona. Um, he's getting up there in age. By the time the 2023 season starts, he's going to be 34 years old. I feel like the Cardinals should maybe just go ahead and move on from him if Hudson doesn't retire. Uh, but I would be surprised if Hudson is a starting center at week one for the Cardinals in the 2023 season. Uh, McGovern is a guy to me. I think it's honestly pretty underrated. When you look at Hudson, like I said, he played four games, 300 snaps, two penalties. He had a 58 PFF grade. McGovern, he had 1,111 snaps, four penalties. He had five sacks, but his PFF grade was nearly 70, nearly a 12-point difference between him and Rodney Hudson. I feel like he's one of the more underrated uh, players here in the entire free agency. So getting uh, Connor McGovern here as your next center would be really good because this offensive line has struggled at times. Uh, under Kyler Murray as their quarterback. Getting a guy like McGovern, who's been around the league for several years and has proven he could be pretty good, would be very beneficial to this Cardinals offensive line and Kyler Murray. 
So that was really the only free agency signing outside of Arizona I had them signing. But here's to the draft now. Three round month draft from PFF. The Cardinals had the third pick in a 2023 draft, and they had them drafting Will Anderson, the edge rusher from Alabama. This is best case scenario for Arizona. This is, to me, arguably the best player available here at number three. It's already a team need. This is the A plus pick. Anderson is amazing. It's honestly wild to me that there are several mock drafts having Anderson fall to the Cardinals at three. Um, when you look at the teams above them, I would not be shocked that they maybe took Anderson. In three years with the Crimson Tide, he had 58 and a half tackles for loss. He had 34 and a half sacks. He is a monster all over the field. He would, you know, take over the absence of JJ Watt. He would kind of fill with JJ Watt's void. Uh, for Arizona, but when you have a guy like Anderson available at number three, the Cardinals have to be running to the podium to draft him there. That would be an amazing pickup for the Cardinals. In my opinion, that's 100% best case scenario, not including trade backs. I know you know maybe the Cardinals may trade back, but on these, I don't do trade backs because they're too hard to predict and different things like that. But Will Anderson Jr., the edge rusher from Alabama with the third pick overall, is a great way to start off the draft uh, for the Cardinals. Round two with a 34th pick overall. I have them drafting uh, Tyreek Stevenson, the corner from Miami, Florida. The last two years, he has over 60 tackles, three interceptions, and 11 passes defended. Uh, you know, he's one of the better players here available. It's also a team need. And, you know, this is kind of a situation where they draft corner and they, you know, already re-signed Byron Murphy. You know, corner was a need heading on the offseason, but you retain your main guy and you draft one early. All of a sudden, you get corner. It was a team need, and that was something one of your strengths at. So when you have Stevenson and you uh, re-sign Murphy, I feel like that's a really good way for Arizona to have – uh, corner, which was a weakness, now kind of one of your strengths here. But getting him the 34th pick, to me, I feel like pretty good pickup here for Arizona here in a second round. And the Cardinals have two third-round picks. With their first third-round pick, I had them drafting North Dakota State offense tackle Cody Monch. When you look at him, he was one of the winners at the Senior Bowl. Uh, this is a 66 pick. He's a guy who I think by the time the draft you know comes around, he could possibly make his way to the top 40, maybe even the first round. Like He had a really, really nice Senior Bowl. Uh, he's very underrated, and when you look at him, I've seen several things talk about maybe you move him to guard, and this is interesting because if you have him and you move him to guard, maybe you know they have Will Hernandez as a backup and you know Mach starts, or then maybe Hernandez starts for a little bit, and then Cody Mach eventually starts. It's something maybe the Cardinals may should consider here, but maybe they do play him at tackle. You know, I've seen stuff he could play maybe tackle, but if a team needs him to, he could probably make a move to guard, which is very good. Anytime you draft the offensive lineman, it's much better if they're versatile, could play multiple positions compared to just one. But getting Cody Mach here with a 66 pick would be a tremendous value pick here for the Cardinals here in the third round. Like I said, they have two third round picks in their other third round pick. They draft Tennessee edge rusher Byron Young. When you look at Jonathan Gannon this past year being the Eagles defense coordinator, his emphasis was getting to the quarterback. 70 sacks, two away from the NFL record, four players with 10 sacks or more. I would not be surprised once we get, you know, past maybe the second round or so, we maybe see Arizona pick up more defensive players because Gannon's, you know, a defensive-minded coach. And, you know, Byron Young, the edge rusher from Tennessee, kind of, you know, resembles a playing style that Jonathan Gannon would like, a guy who gets to the quarterback, We'll get some quarterback hits, quarterback hurries, some sacks and stuff like that. In his two years uh, with Tennessee, he has 75 tackles, 23 and a half tackles for off, and 12 and a half sacks. Kind of like what I said with corner. You know, heading into the offseason, corner is a weakness, but if you re-sign Murphy and you draft a corner early, it's a strength. Edge is a weakness as of right now, but if you re-sign Zach Allen, you get Will Anderson, and you draft Byron Young, all of a sudden you're looking at edge as one of the better you know positions here for the Cardinals heading into the 2023 season. I feel that like Byron Young will be a great value pick here with the Cardinals with a 96 selection overall. So when you look at this kind of free agency signings, I had them re-sign some of the guys. I had them re-sign Byron Murphy to a three-year deal worth $21 million. They re-signed Will Hernandez, two-year deal worth $8 million. They re-signed edge rusher Zach Allen to a three-year deal worth 24. The only really outside free agent I had the Cardinals signing is center uh, Connor McGovern to a three-year deal worth 24 million. And in the draft with the third pick, they draft Will Anderson. In the second round, they draft Miami Florida cornerback Tyreek Stevenson. In the third round, they draft North Dakota State tackle Cody Mach. And with their other third round pick, they draft Tennessee edge rusher Byron Young. Looking at this 2023 schedule here for the Cardinals, based on the moves I did in this video, kind of looking at the the Cardinals schedule. It's very interesting. Um, 
when you look at the first four games, Washington, the Steelers, Rams, the 49ers, I think they won one, maybe two. Seahawks, Cowboys, Giants, Ravens, I think they won one, maybe two. Bengals, Browns, Rams, Eagles, I'd be surprised they won one more than one game there. And then the 49ers, Seahawks, Falcons, Bears, Texans, I think they could win maybe three, maybe four games there. So when you're looking at the uh, Cardinals 2023 schedule, based on the moves uh, I did in this video for Arizona, I have them going 7-10 this upcoming year. And uh, I know last year, you know, they only won four games. That was with Kyle Murray being hurt. But when you look at this Cardinals team, I feel like it might take a year or two before they, they get back to the playoffs due to, you know, Jonathan Gannon being a first-year head coach. That about does it for this video. Comment who you want the Cardinals to draft and sign in free agency. If you're new to the channel or if you've seen my videos before, I would really appreciate it if you could like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time on the Sports 2 Hind Show.